In this video, we will summarize Act 2, Scene 1 and Act 2, Scene 2 of A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. Some of the characters introduced are vital to the play, so it is important you watch the video the whole way through. Act 2, Scene 1 opens with two fairies, one known simply as the fairy and the other as Robin Goodfellow. The fairy works for Queen of the Fairies, Titania, and her job is to organise fairy dances for the Queen. Meanwhile, Goodfellow works for the King of the Fairies, Oberon. Goodfellow warns the fairy that the King is having a party that very night, and it would be wise if Titania was as far away as possible. Oberon had not forgiven Titania for not giving him a beautiful Indian boy she currently looks after, who Oberon wants to make his personal assistant. Goodfellow then reveals himself as the fairy, known more commonly as Puck, famous for being a practical joker amongst the other fairies. <laughs> the two fairies are interrupted by the emergence of Oberon and Titania. The king and queen argue, accusing each other of being unfaithful. Oberon finally demands Titania hand over the Indian boy, otherwise known as the changeling, but Titania refuses. Titania tries to make up with Oberon by inviting him to join her at one of her fairy dances. But Oberon will not be swayed. He tells Titania he will not talk to her until she hands over the Indian boy. Titania storms off and Oberon hatches a plan to poison Titania with the juices from a specific flower that was once struck by one of Cupid's stray arrows. If the nectar from this flower was rubbed on a person's eyes whilst they slept, once they woke up, they would fall in love with the first thing that they saw. Oberon plans to use the potion to make Titania fall in love with something hideous. Then he will be able to steal the changeling boy. He sends Puck away to find the flower. Just before Oberon leaves, Demetrius and Helena enter. Demetrius is searching for Hermia all over the forest, but Helena has followed along, desperately expressing her love for him. Truly, deeply love you. Demetrius loses his patience and tells Helena quite aggressively to go away. Oberon witnesses the whole thing. He feels sorry for Helena. When Puck returns with the flower, he tells the fairy to use some of the juice to make the Athenian man he's just seen fall in love with the girl he treated so badly. Oberon tells Puck he will be able to find Demetrius because of the distinctive Athenian robes he is wearing. Puck flies off to carry out Oberon's orders. This act has two main themes. The first is magic. Ho, 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 it's magic. Shakespeare wants the woods to feel like a magical place where reality and wonder intertwine. Secondly, this act explores love and the theme of gender roles. Oberon is angry at Titania because she refuses to obey him. He reminds her that he is her lord and she should listen to him. Shakespeare lived in a very patriarchal society where men usually ruled. Shakespeare may have been hinting at the change in women during Elizabethan times with the new woman seen as a danger to man's authority. I 
Shakespeare is also highlighting how irrational and stupid love can be. The fact Helena is devoted to Demetrius, even though he openly dislikes her, strengthens this point. The flower is also significant. The fact it can allow somebody to fall in love with the first thing they see confirms how powerful and silly love can be. To summarise, we are introduced to Oberon and Titania, the fairy king and queen. The couple are quarrelling over a beautiful Indian boy who Titania took custody of but Oberon wants. Titania refuses to give the boy away. Oberon asks his fairy servant Puck to find a specific flower that will help him play a trick on Titania in order to steal the boy. The play then moves on to Act 2, Scene 2. Titania is at one of her fairy dancers, dancing the night away. Friday then, this Saturday, Sunday what? This Friday then, this Friday, Sunday what? This Friday again, this Friday. When she falls asleep, Oberon sneaks in and places the flower nectar on her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do an evil laugh. Ciao for now. We are then reintroduced to Hermia and Lysander. They have made it to the forest where they plan to hide out. After travelling all day, they are tired and decide to get some rest. Hermia soon makes Lysander move away. She is uncomfortable with them being too close before their wedding. Once asleep, Puck appears and spots Lysander sleeping. Because he's wearing Athenian clothes, Puck assumes Lysander is Demetrius and sprinkles his eyes with the love potion from the flower. Helena enters. She had been trying to keep up with Demetrius, but he had managed to run away. She spots Lysander and thinks he's hurt so runs over and wakes him up. When he wakes up, the potion takes its toll. He immediately falls in love with Helena. He expresses this love to her, but Helena thinks Lysander is making fun of her and quickly leaves. Lysander gets up and follows her. Hermia is next to wake up she begins to talk about a nightmare she had about a snake laying on her chest. Oh, hell no! This could foreshadow the hurt her heart will feel when she realises Lysander now loves Helena. <music> to summarise, Oberon manages to sprinkle the love potion into Titania's eyes meaning when she wakes up, she will fall in love with the first thing she sees. Puck thinks he's carried out Oberon's orders and made Demetrius fall in love with Helena, but Puck has sprinkled the flower's nectar into Lysander's eyes rather than Demetrius's. Lysander wakes up and falls madly in love with Helena. The consequence of this is that Lysander no longer loves Hermia. For more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe. And if you haven't already, smash that like button. Do it now. Done? Great. Thanks for watching and see you next time.